What's up, Seattle? We are back with another episode of the show that talks about some of what you're talking about online. And we got a packed show for you today. We're talking about the search for solutions after two big stories in Seattle over the past week. That big encampment fire that you might have seen above Interstate 5 in Seattle and that mass shooting that was tied to a street racing and sideshow that happened on the city's Capitol Hill. We're also going to be talking about some of the restaurants and businesses that you want to see come back. Those restaurants and businesses that were shuttered and the anonymous artist that is painting over graffiti with murals. It's time to sound off on Sound On. Hey everybody, I'm Tyra Majors. Welcome to Sound On episode 10. We made it to double digits. Oh my gosh, thank you all for keeping up with us and watching every week. We appreciate you. We like your feedback as well. Yeah, and this week we're going to start with two big stories that rock the city of Seattle. One of them just happened on Sunday morning, a mass shooting on the city's Capitol Hill that left four people injured. And this was tied to one of those illegal street races or those sideshows that we've been reporting on for months now. Oh my goodness, just terrible. And people were hurt. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Including one woman who was hurt critically. Oh my goodness. And this obviously happened during a high impact weekend. So many people in town for sports games and yep. the Taylor Swift concert. So definitely rocking the community. We've been talking for months now about the efforts to crack down on some of these side streets and, and shows. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been some discussion with the Seattle City Council about possibly putting cameras in some of these areas, mm -hmm. places like um, Alki Beach, where they've happened a couple of spots in um, West Seattle. And so one of the you know questions that we're asking this week is, what's the solution to this? Do you think cameras are going to work or is it going to take something else to sort of crack down on these huge groups that come together? A lot of times they're shooting videos on their cell phones to post on social media. But obviously this one lead, led to a pretty dangerous situation with four people getting hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. And not only do they lead to dangerous situations, but the street racing is dangerous in itself. In, in, so, indeed. Yeah. yeah. Let us know what you think in the comments. And then we had another big story that rocked the Seattle, obviously we're familiar with our homeless situation here in the city. Lots of encampments off the sides of the freeway behind mm -hmm. retaining walls and whatnot. An encampment fire broke out last week during the morning commute. And this wasn't just any encampment fire, Steve. You guys saw multiple explosions live on the air. And by the time we took that shot, initially, the fire was already huge. Okay. And then we were going live. And then you saw these two huge explosions that just increased the size Gosh. of this thing. And this happened right next to Harborview Medical Center, like yeah. just a short distance away. So right next to the major trauma hospital mm. for this region. It's, it's crazy. It's a really busy area too, coming yeah. into downtown Seattle on northbound I-5. Um, a lot of people weighed in on this one. Yeah. More than 140 comments on our website about that story. Yeah, and one of them that sort of caught our eye was the one from Major Matt Mason, who said, letting the homeless live in these encampments is not compassionate. There's nothing noble about letting them live as they want like this. And then another one said, when not if, when one of these fires spreads to homes or apartments and kills people when not if that's really strong and I think that was one of the concerns is with these trees that were burning what if one of those would have fallen because this was right above I-5 yeah what if one of those would have fallen and hit somebody who was driving on the mm. road because traffic was still going my goodness it's, just, it's terrifying it is it is, it it is. is. and you drive up and down I-5 right you're gonna see a bunch of these homeless encampments on state property along some of the freeways so what's being done to address them, right? We've heard from the governor who said that these campments along state freeways are a scourge on the state, promised earlier this year to speed up efforts to remove them. He even told us last week, you know, the state has invested billions of dollars in this, rapidly housing as fast as possible. And he says the state has actually reduced encampments by the dozens in the state of Washington, I would argue that maybe some people haven't seen much of a difference. I will say in my three years living here, I haven't seen much of a difference in that in that short period of yeah. time. And I know this is an ongoing effort. 120 comments on that initiative on our website. Just on the governor's comments alone, East King County was one of them who said that they're a former police officer. And they go on to say, I can assure you, Inslee and the state of Washington are nowhere near doing everything they can or anywhere near their best is what that person says. Yeah. So what do you think? Chime in. We want to hear your solutions. That's right. You know, and during the pandemic, one of the things that we t saw, particularly in downtown Seattle, is a number of businesses or restaurants shutter mm. because of pandemic and closures, but then also the ongoing crime and homelessness yeah. issue. And there's been this interesting discussion on Reddit that has generated hundreds of comments about which businesses and restaurants that have shuttered 
would you bring back? Oh, that's a really good yeah. topic. You know, there are so many great places, so many great restaurants and businesses in general that have shut their doors mm -hmm. that a lot of people would like to see come back. In fact, lots of people are weighing in on this. If they had the chance, Reckless in Seattle says they'd bring back Bamboo Garden. Never been there. I haven't either. Tramps Go says the still life in Fremont. Mm. M.U. says Rebar. You've been to Rebar? I've been to Rebar before. Yeah, that was a good place. Too damaged, too damaged, says Cinerama. Oh my goodness, I live by Cinerama and it closed when I, it was already closed when I moved here, but oh. I always looked at it and I was like, oh my God, I, I wish it was open still. And I heard the chocolate popcorn was so good. So good. And I'm just thinking about, you know, these big movies that have come out yeah. in this past week, like Barbie, Barbie and then Oppenheimer yeah. that a lot of people have go to, gone to see what great films to go and see at a place like Cinerama. Well, it looks like there's a possibility it may be coming back, because oh, SIF did announce back. in May that mm -hmm. it, they acquired Cinerama and have plans to reopen it this year. I can't wait for that. That chocolate popcorn is really good. That's what I heard. So as soon as that happens, maybe we go need to see a show and then have that popcorn. Well, as a localite yourself, <laughs> yes. if you could bring back any restaurant or business that has closed down its doors in the past years, what would you bring back? You know, there's this place that, uh, particularly in the summertime, on Alki Beach, that was West Seattle Brewing, and they have they had two locations. Their original one is still open, but they had this spot right along Alki Beach okay. that closed down last year. This was a tap house after the landlord apparently announced plans for the space, and those didn't involve West Seattle Brewing. Well, apparently the plans didn't come to fruition, but the spot is coming back with new owners. Oh. So the folks over at Future Primitive Brewing are going to be opening up in that exact same spot. They're making some changes right now to the outside deck and on the inside too. What I love about this space, there's no opening date set yet, but what I love about this space is it's right across from the beach. Mm -hmm. They have some sand on their grounds with these Adirondack chairs. Ooh. You go get a beer, you sit in the chair, you're looking at the water, and you still have your feet in the sand even though you're across the street. Oh, that sounds amazing. That's awesome. Nothing better than a brew on a beach, mm -hmm. right? With this feet in the sand. Yeah, well, yeah. that's nice that they're going to be opening up a new spot yeah. in the same well, area. Yeah, changes, but in the same changes. spot. Changes, yeah. What about you? Um, there was this one I really liked called London Plain oh, in Pioneer Square. Yes. Yeah, have you yet been there? I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It feels like you're in London and you can yeah. sip tea and they have little yummy ham sandwiches and like avocado toast. It, it was, was definitely <laughs> a cool vibe. It was a cool vibe. But it was right in the middle of Pioneer Square, in the heart of Pioneer Square in yeah. Occidental Park. And um, I, you know, I've heard multiple different reasons of why they closed down. Apparently the owners wanted to pursue new passions, new paths, but then also, you know, if you're familiar with the news cycle down in Pioneer Square, you know that crime has it's been a lot of issues, it's been a lot of issues. Yeah. crime, homelessness. So, I mean, there's a lot of great places still to enjoy in the there city are. and we'll just have to deal with those. It's <laughs> sad to see being. some of them go. And I know that there's yeah. obviously various reasons for why businesses close, sure. you know, whether owners are retiring, they're tired of issues with crime and homelessness and just it's not viable anymore. Mm -hmm all sorts of things, but it's sad to see them go. Obviously cool to see new new spaces open back up in some of those properties. And too. there are lots of new ones opening. Yeah. So yeah, we'd like to know what restaurants or businesses would you like to see come back? Which, what do you miss? What food do you miss? Mm. Maybe there's a pizza place that just had the best saucy <gasps> pepperoni pizza. That sounds so good right now. It's gone though. It's like cheesy. Oh. I know, right? Leave it in the comments. Leave it in the comments. <laughs> Let, Let us, us know. know. <laughs> yeah. And as you're driving around, I know, you know, depending on wherever community you go to, there's graffiti all over the place. Yes. Right? Yeah. Graffiti is a big thing. Yeah. Um, lots of people use it as a form of expression and they yeah. express their creativity. Others use it for different reasons. <laughs> Maybe they're putting things that aren't so kind. Yes. And um, that actually happened in one neighborhood. What neighborhood was this in? Oh, geez. Oh, geez. I don't, know I don't think they said. They didn't tell us where they lived, but this was in Seattle. This person said that their yard had a retaining wall facing an alley, and on that retaining wall was a bunch of graffiti. It wasn't, it wasn't content that was necessarily likable. I'll say mm, that. Okay. It Good was change. a nuisance, basically, to this person. They yeah. had it professionally cleaned off, but after a few months, the graffiti artists, the taggers, whatever you want to call them, started to tag again. Annoying. So. Yeah, so they were just like, what do we do? Do we grow plants over it? Do we keep getting it professionally cleaned? 
They woke up one morning and that retaining wall was completely covered in a beautiful mural. Oh, I love that. Someone came in, an artist, and decided to paint something beautiful over whatever was negative on that tagged wall. See, you know what? We should do that more often around here. Like, I'm yeah. just thinking about driving down the freeway because I went to the Lavender Festival this past weekend. Ooh. And just driving down, down I-5, there's certain sections where there's so much graffiti yeah. on both sides of I-5. What if you had, like, artists, like, put some art on those things? It's incredible. I mean, yeah. call, it an, call them an anti-graffiti artist if you want. That's what this person said on Reddit actually or you can call them artists but if you're going to tag walls or paint over walls you might as well make something beautiful right why not <laughs> yeah in this case it was anonymous so yes. we have no idea who this person was yeah so it's a random act of kindness a lot of people weighing in on this one a couple good comments someone said this is the type of urban art i really like mm. if this was a majority of graffiti in major cities i think people would have different opinions on it i have to agree with that person yeah illustrious complex six says yeah and honestly most not all unfortunately taggers respect artists enough to not paint over it so it's usually a good deterrent mm. wish there was a unified way we could connect local street artists to areas like yes this. that would be cool spot on all street artists came together to paints beautiful murals over yeah. graffiti. Imagine how much of a difference that would make in the community, right? I like that comment, Steve. Oh, does that mean it deserves an award, maybe? An award. Do we have a little, little present? We got a little one right here. <laughs> this is Butch, a little Butch, a little Funko Butch. <laughs> Illustrious Complex 6. Butch is a cougar mascot. Yes. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs> All right, so that one goes to Illustrious Complex 6. Congrats, you get the sound on. Usually it's the bobblehead comment yeah. best comment of the week but we're gonna call this the sound on funko best comment of the week award we love com funkos Ooh, yeah such a long title mm -hmm. yeah Based in Everett, that is a long title <laughs> it is a really long title all right so you didn't go to taylor swift oh i was not there but i saw all the videos in the crowd i didn't go to taylor swift okay. either but i had some friends that kind of like camped out mm -hmm. outside lumen field oh my and goodness some friends that were on the inside so that's all over and now the big takedown of lumen field mm -hmm. so what comes next right Ooh. what's the next big event that's happening at lumen field we have some awesome events going on this weekend to make your weekend jam-packed. They have the Seattle Art Fair, which is taking place Thursday through Sunday, so multiple days. This is at the Lumen Field Event Center. Art from 68 galleries around the world. It's described as a leading destination for the best in modern and contemporary art. How that about that? That sounds like a lot of fun. And that's yeah. happening over three days, two days? Four days. Four days. Yeah, oh Thursday my goodness. And there's some more art. This one for people on the east side, the Bellevue Arts Museum Arts Fair. That's happening Friday through Sunday. This is at Bellevue Square and the Bellevue Arts Museum. They're coming together, bringing together 300 inspiring that's artists. A lot. 300, that's a lot, and they're all going to be showcasing their unique handmade crafts and artwork. I can't wait. They're actually, I do want to get some art, so maybe that might be a good spot yeah. to stop by. All right, have you been part of the uh, Torchlight Parade? Have you seen it before? I've been part of it, but I have seen a bit of it. You have seen a bit of it. You were right, a so part that, of it, so I'm going to put I you on blast. Years ago, <laughs> little Stevie was in there as part of a marching band. Thank God that was before social media, so I don't think there's any pictures of that. That is back this year, <laughs> Saturday, July 29th. New this year, what is interesting, normally it's held at night. And this year, it's going to start in the afternoon. It's going to start at 3 o'clock, so an earlier time. Okay. So you can go down, grab your spot, and then once it's over, everybody kind of like feeds out. 100 plus parade entries. Mm. A lot. So you got sports teams, military bands, the legendary Seafarer Pirates, which we all oh, love. cool. Yeah, so it's going to be a fun event on Saturday. Steve, don't lie. I know you have that picture somewhere in the archives. I mean, it might be buried somewhere, but I'm not going to dig it out. All right, then. We'll just have to use our imaginations of little yes. Stevie in that torchlight parade. Lycra <laughs> with gold sequin. It was, a, it, was a, it was a look. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we have another really fun event, Steve. This is the first Afrobeats Music Festival ever coming to the Pacific Northwest. It's Very being cool. put on by a local DJ, DJ Blast, and he's bringing a, an amazing lineup of artists, different singers, musicians, DJs, who all focus on the genre of Afrobeats music. And they're going to be performing cool. at Seattle Center on Saturday. And very much popular around the country. So it's oh cool to God. have this event kind of launching here in Seattle. For, for sure, launching in Seattle. It's going to be cool. awesome. But yeah, that's on Saturday. So there's an event, something for everybody, everybody, every single day this week. You want art, you want parades, you want music. We got it all for we you. We have it all. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for episode 10 of Sound On. Steve, this has been so fun so far. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. And remember, this is a two-way street. We want to hear from you. We are talking about what you all want us to talk about. So keep on letting us know in the comments what you want us to discuss. Yeah, two-way conversation. We'll be back next week.